from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. And good morning to you. Welcome to Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Megan Shin. Time now is 5 o'clock here on your Wednesday morning. Ladies, good morning. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Let's get started with your headlines on this January the 13th. A historic vote is expected today in Congress to impeach President Trump for the second time, one week after that mob attacked the U.S. Capitol. Some who have lost their jobs due to the pandemic are still waiting for the unemployment assistance they were promised. Working for you, we're finding out why and what's being done to fix it. And IPS is showing off its schools and the programs that they have to offer. Our own Alyssa Donovan gives us a preview of this event and how you can use it to help find the right learning path for your students. We do want to thank you for starting your Wednesday with our team here on Good Morning Indiana. Megan, I was telling you I was a little tired this morning, but we're getting to that halfway point of the work week. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Getting over the halfway point. I got an extra cup of coffee with me, Raphael. I don't know if you have any more coffee brewing there. Well. As we know, Lauren loves to climb the hill. We're at the right. middle of the hill, right? I don't love it. We talked about that last week, Todd Clausen. So now here we go. Yeah. We're at the top of the hill. Now we're just going to cruise right into the weekend. Yeah. Morning, you please. know, you know, and it's Wednesday. It's the top of the hill, and it's about as warm as our temperatures are going to get this entire mm. week. Uh, unfortunately, as we head towards the weekend, it's going to get cooler again. Yesterday, how nice was that? We got the sunshine back. We had temperatures that were in the 40s. Uh, today, we should be back in the 40s with some sunshine. Here's the view right now. As you look from downtown uh, off to the west, skies are clear in Lafayette and Bloomington with temperatures hovering right around the freezing mark, 30 degrees in Indianapolis uh, with partly cloudy skies. And you notice a little more in the way of cloud cover this morning across northern locations, clearer skies as you work your way uh, down to the south. But the overall weather pattern for today is going to be pretty quiet all across uh, the area. We're not expecting any precipitation that changes uh, for the day tomorrow. But look at these temperatures. We'll quickly climb out of the 20s if you're in them this morning through the 30s by the noon hour we're looking at a temperature already right around 40 degrees and then we should be right around 44 to 45 uh, throughout much of the afternoon as the clouds start to gather our normal high this time of year is 35 so we're nearly 10 degrees above normal i mentioned the changes with some precipitation tomorrow we'll first see some rain and then potentially some snow lauren more on that coming up in just a few minutes all right todd thanks let's take a look at traffic for your commute this is a live look up on the north side i-465 in michigan road traffic in this spot is traveling up to speed. No crashes to report around the metro area at this early hour. Raphael. Lauren, thank you so much. All eyes are on the nation's capital today. One week after the Capitol riot, President Trump, Megan, is now facing a second impeachment. That's right. The House is set to take action on this that historic vote today after Vice President Mike Pence said he would not invoke the 25th Amendment. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, House lawmakers plowing ahead with plans to impeach President Trump after exhausting two other options Democrats laid on the table. President Trump has rebuffed calls to resign following the deadly siege at the U.S. Capitol. And Vice President Mike Pence also now saying he will not invoke the 25th Amendment to remove him from office. It is the political equivalent of shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue and getting away with it. And somebody needs to stand up to that. Overnight, Democrats moving ahead anyway. The motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Voting to formally request Pence to strip Trump of power. The move largely symbolic, carrying no force of the law. At least five House Republicans on the record breaking with the president, saying they'll back the historic vote later on today to impeach Trump for a second time. To allow the president of the United States to incite this attack without consequences is a direct threat to the future of this democracy. For this reason, I will vote to impeach this president. Liz Cheney, the third highest ranking GOP lawmaker in the House, writing, Trump summoned this mob, assembled this mob, and lit the flame of this attack. Adding, quote, there has never been a greater betrayal of a president of the United States of his office and his oath of the Constitution. But in his first appearance since telling supporters to march to the Capitol, Trump taking no responsibility. People thought that what I said was totally appropriate. This, as a chilling new report shows, there was an internal FBI report the day before the siege warning of a violent war at the Capitol. The acting attorney general with a clear message. We will spare no resources in protecting public safety in the coming days. 
And once the House votes today, the Senate would need to convict President Trump in order to remove him from office. Meanwhile, sources tell ABC News Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell believes President Trump committed impeachable offenses. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And Eli Lilly's political action committee is stopping donations to Indiana Republican House members who voted against certifying the 2020 election results. That includes representatives Jim Banks, Jackie Walorski, Greg Pence and Jim Baird. During the 2020 cycle, Lily Pack donated $10,000 to Banks and Walorski, $5,000 to Pence and $1,000 to Baird. And Lily released this statement saying in part, quote, we expect any candidate we support to demonstrate respect for our democratic process and institutions. As such, Lily Pack will suspend political giving to those who voted against certification of the 2020 election results, end quote. Eli Lilly is one of multiple corporations suspending donations at this time. America American Express, Marriott, and others have made similar moves towards GOP representatives over the election certification. Raphael. Uh, this afternoon, we could learn more about the state's vaccinations plans during Indiana's weekly briefing uh, on the pandemic, it, of course, led by the governor. Working for you this morning, we're looking into vaccine clinics across central Indiana. On Tuesday, the Fisher's Health Department administered its first COVID-19 vaccine at a temporary site. The department also acquired the former Marsh Supermarket that's located at 116th Street and Brooks School Road for a mass vaccination site. And that should be up and running by the end of the month and could vaccinate up to 1,000 people there at a time. Now, earlier this week, health officials began administering the vaccine at the 4-H fairgrounds in Noblesville, and the Marion County Health Department is operating one of nine sites at 38th and Lafayette Road. Megan? Raphael, here's a look at Indiana's, in, at Indiana's latest COVID-19 numbers. 88 more Hoosiers have died with the virus. More than 8,700 deaths have been reported since the pandemic began. The State Department of Health has also confirmed 3,191 new cases, bringing the state's total cases to more than 570,000. And nearly 2.3 million children in the U.S. have tested positive for COVID-19. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. About 100 171,000 new cases were identified in kids last week alone. That's children ages 0 to 19. In Indiana, 14.1% of total cases were in kids were in that age range. And data shows that kids are less likely to be hospitalized or die from the disease. But health experts say they are working to learn more about how the virus may affect them long term. It is 5.07 on your Wednesday. Many Hoosiers continue to have some frustrations with Indiana's unemployment system. Hoosiers who are collecting traditional unemployment started getting that extra weekly $300 in federal benefits on Friday with the payments retroactive to December 27th. But that's not the case for Hoosiers under the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. People like Victoria Stackhouse, she's self-employed and a crafter, and she applied for a PUA benefits back in April, but those benefits stopped in late December. Those of us that were self-employed on PUA had to stay home and, and, you know, teach our children throughout this pandemic. We feel very left out and like you just don't even think about the unemployment system. So the Department of Workforce Development tells WRTV that discussions are underway to implement changes to distribute those benefits. A spokesperson says an announcement is expected this week. Of course, we'll bring you any updates just as soon as we get new information. Central Indiana's biggest public school system is showcasing its specialty programs that benefit thousands of kids, Raphael. Our Alyssa Donovan joins us live this morning with the effort to recruit, retain, and reach out to families right here in Indianapolis. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Raphael. Like many things this year, the IPS showcase of schools is going to be completely virtual today. It starts at 9 this morning, and we'll have details on our website as we head through the morning on how to register. What this is, is it's a way for IPS to highlight some of the schools in the district and what they have to offer. During the event, families can head to the showcase of schools website and search through all of the schools available for students. They can also watch informational videos to learn more. 
more. And during the virtual event, representatives will be available from each school to answer questions parents may have. This is also an opportunity for these schools to showcase what they can offer. And a lot of these schools are STEM schools, performing arts schools. So there's a lot of options for students that parents can explore today. And again, this starts at 9 this morning. It goes until 9 p.m. tonight because it is a virtual event. They can do that really all day. You can log in whenever works for you. For more details on how to register, you can go to WRTV.com. Reporting live, I'm Melissa Donovan, WRTV. All right, thank you there, Alyssa. As you go to the bus stop and you head to your cars to head to work as well, you're walking out to temperatures that are typical for the middle of January here. It's nothing abnormal. We're in the 20s and 30s, uh, depending on where you are. And as you come home from uh, work, temperatures are going to be uh, climbing up through the 30s uh, into the 40s with skies that are going to be mostly cloudy. Radar is quiet here, uh, but a big storm system is just coming on shore in the Pacific Northwest with some heavy mountain snow and a lot of rain from Seattle down almost to San Francisco. Why do I point that out? Well, that's the storm system that is going to be heading our way as we head towards the end of the week here and eventually into the weekend. We are dry today. Tomorrow, rain chances will increase late in the day, and then it's a moderate chance of rain and snow as we get into Friday and Saturday. As the colder air comes in with this storm system, we'll break it all down for you coming up in Maine weather here in just a few minutes. All right, Todd, thank you. Another social media platform taking a stand against President Trump. Coming up, the restrictions YouTube is now putting on the president's profile. And a new business is preparing for its grand opening this week. A look inside the new distillery and how they plan to give back to the community. Stick with us. We'll be right back. The car you want, the way you want. Welcome back. The time right now is 514. Let's take a look at traffic for your commute. Things are quiet here at I-465 and Michigan Road. This is up on the north side of town. We'll continue to keep you updated if there are any trouble spots you need to avoid. So, Raphael, YouTube is the latest internet platform to take action against President Trump. The video sharing site Lauren has banned his channel for at least a week and could really expand that much farther. YouTube says a recent video on Mr. Trump's channel earned what it calls a strike. The platform would not specify the content of that video and only said it incited violence. The video has been removed, but YouTube says it will revisit that decision in a week. Until then, the president can't upload new videos and comments on existing videos are temporarily disabled. This comes after both Twitter and Facebook permanently banned him from their platforms. Megan? Raphael, the CDC estimates 7% of adults avoid immunizations because they have a fear of needles. It's something that could be an issue for people trying to get the COVID-19 vaccine. However, doctors say there are ways to kick that phobia. For people with a more mild fear, doctors suggest practicing relaxation techniques before getting vaccinated or finding something to distract yourself with during the shot, like playing a game on your phone. For those with more severe cases, doctors suggest behavioral therapy. They say between four and ten sessions are usually enough to treat needle phobia. Well, Yelp is offering a new feature for users to report whether businesses are enforcing coronavirus guidelines. It's an expansion of Yelp's COVID-19 section on its profile pages. Reviewers can mark whether staff are wearing masks and if social distancing is being enforced. Yelp says it's a move they hope will make consumers more confident in supporting their local businesses. For users to be warned about how a business is handling COVID guidelines, Yelp says there must be several complaints against it. Reviews of that business will then be monitored daily to see if it improves. At 516, let's check in with Todd for our midweek forecast. Hey, Todd. And today is probably going to be the warmest day of the week, and it's going to feature some sunshine, which is always good news. We finally got back into the sunshine yesterday after almost a week-long stretch of just cloudy skies outside right now. As you look from downtown off to the west, you notice there's a little haze out there. That is not fog. There's just some moisture that's suspended in the atmosphere, and there's a little bit of a damp feel as you get going. Uh, once again, very similar to the past uh, a few mornings, but temperatures this morning are running a lot warmer. We're in the 20s and 30s here. There are right now uh, 33 in Lafayette, 32 in Bloomington, 27 in Greenfield, Muncie uh, sitting at 32 degrees as well. Feels a little bit cooler when you factor in a little bit of a breeze out of the southwest. It's not all that bad, though, but your wind chill is down to 25 in Lafayette as well as Bloomington at this 5 a.m. hour. Temperatures will hold pretty steady here through 8 a.m. Once the sun comes up, though, we will see these temperatures start to moderate fairly quickly. 
into the mid 30s as we head into the 11 and 12 o'clock hour. And then we'll continue to see our temperatures warm from that point forward. As far as any precipitation, I do not think we see any today. There's just a little bit of cloud cover here in uh, the Peru area over towards Monticello and Logansport. Uh, but otherwise, the closest precipitation is back near Minneapolis here this morning. So that'll not impact us uh, throughout the day today. High temperatures today will be topping off in the mid 40s, keeping in mind that our normal high temperature this time of year is 35. We're up to 44 today in Frankfurt, as well as Marion 46 in Anderson, about 46 here in India, as well as Martinsville and the Brazil area and temperatures uh, very similar here in southern locales as well. 46 in Bloomington, Columbus, all right at 47 degrees. This evening, if you have plans celebrating uh, the middle of uh, the week, uh, maybe heading out to dinner or maybe just heading out uh, for a walk in the neighborhood or to a workout class, your temperatures will be right around 38, 39 degrees with skies that will be mostly cloudy. Now, tomorrow is when things start to change. Not so much during the daytime hours. There's definitely more clouds around uh, throughout the day tomorrow compared to what we'll start with today. But we still get up into the 40s. But once we get into the evening hours tomorrow, I'm going to fast forward here on TrueCast. This is after sunset tomorrow. There will be a, maybe a band of mainly rain coming through. It could be a little bit of mixed precipitation. But that's the leading edge of some colder air that's going to be coming in for the tail end of the week. Once we jump to Friday, we'll start to change some of those rain showers over to some snow showers here across the area. We're not looking at any hefty snowfall totals here, but my bigger concern with these snow showers as they come in will be reduced visibility on the roadways as some of them could be a little intense and maybe picking up a quick coating on the roadways, maybe up to an inch in spots. Just talking about minor snow accumulation, but it's definitely a transition to more colder air as we work our way into the weekend. Saturday, a high of only 33 degrees, and then Sunday could be a few flurries around with a temperature that's going to be sitting right at 31. Here's your seven day planning forecast and you can see once we go beyond the weekend into next week, still sticking around some clouds across the area. Lauren, uh, low temperatures will be back down into the mid 20s and highs more seasonable for January standards in the low to mid 30s. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Let's take a look at your commute this morning as you're heading into the downtown area for work on this Wednesday. It's I 65 and West Street and MLK where traffic is picking up. Lots of headlights there moving across your screen already at this early hour. It looks like Everything is traveling up to speed, though, so that is the good news. I'll keep you updated if there are any issues you should avoid this morning. But right now, it's pretty quiet out there, Raphael. So, Lauren, I have a place for the team to gather for lunch, maybe. A new business is hosting a grand opening tomorrow. We're talking about Hotel Tango Zionsville. Its distillery tasting room is located at 106th Street and Zionsville Road. Now, they held a soft opening last night. The general manager, he tells WRTV that Hotel Tango is more than just serving drinks. They also want to serve the community in other ways. Just in passing, you know, we've had a lot of people stop by and say, oh, this, this community needs this so much. Um, and so kind of rolling off of that and feeling like and knowing really that we have a, a great opportunity here um, to provide the community with something special um, and not just a place to go drink and, and, and eat and be merry, but um, Hotel Tango is incredibly involved in the community and we have those exact plans that we apply to our locations um, in Fort Wayne and, and in Fletcher Place. So many different places to enjoy Hotel Tango. The management says they were able to survive this past year with local support from you. Uh, getting creative with their product sales and sales as well as using the financial aid from the Small Business Administration's PPP. They also spent a large portion of 2020 selling and donating hand sanitizer that they made with their alcohol. The new location allowed them to hire on more people, and they're still hiring, so check them out on HiringHoosiers.com as well as our story. You can apply for their jobs at our website, WRTV.com. Megan? I love seeing local businesses thrive. Thanks, Rafael. Well, Chipotle Mexican Grill is also looking to hire Hoosiers. The restaurant chain is holding a national hiring event tomorrow. Their goal is to hire 15,000 new employees nationwide. All Chipotle restaurants will be conducting open interviews from 8 to 10 a.m. and from 2 to 5 p.m. You're asked to register online first to reserve an interview time. A link to do that can be found at the People of Chipotle on Instagram. Interviews will follow COVID protocols, including social distancing and masks, Lauren. 
Well, Megan, Aaron Rodgers is trying his hand at something new. The Green Bay Packers quarterback is going to be a guest host in an upcoming episode of Jeopardy. The quiz show is searching for a permanent replacement for Alex Trebek, who died in November. Rodgers actually does have some Jeopardy experience. He was a contestant on Celebrity Jeopardy in 2015, and he won. He says Trebek was one of his idols growing up, and he's excited for his opportunity to host. Looking forward to that, Raphael. Yeah, I think Todd should try out for that. He's a smart guy. I mean, he knows weather, he knows science, you know, he knows stuff, maps. I vote for Todd to be the host of Jeopardy. I mean, I still want him on Good Morning Indiana, but we'll talk about that later. Oreo is debuting yet another flavor with the ultimate, I mean, the ultimate dessert combo. What's in the new Brookie O Cookie? What? That and more coming up after the break. RTV. Welcome back, Raphael. I know you're a fan of these. Oreo cookies are introducing a new combo of your favorite desserts. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Like, like Todd and Lauren, I like a good cookie. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A cookie in the morning is a good thing to have. Same. It's called the Brookio, though, so check this out, though. It's a brownie chocolate chip cookie Oreo combo. Why not? Have a couple. The Tasty Treat features Oreo's original chocolate wafers with a three-layer filling of brownie cream, original cream, and cookie dough cream. They're on sale now, but only for a limited time. Oreo is known for its vast selection of flavors. It has released 65 new ones since 2012, and Todd, I think I've tasted maybe half of those. <laughs> okay, all of those. I, I'm not sure where I stand in there, but you know what's my favorite still, Raphael? All of them. Well, that, 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 that is true. That is true. I do like them all. The original. The original Classic. is still my favorite. Okay. Okay. The birthday cake okay. one, okay. I was not a fan of. We'll have to try the Brookie O and see where that stacks up against them all. But All right, outside right now we are dealing with temperatures that are in the 20s and 30s. It's a chilly morning across the area with partly cloudy skies right at 30 degrees in Indy, 32 in Bloomington, uh, 27 in Greenfield. We'll start with some sunshine here throughout the day today and partly cloudy skies. that will help to get the temperature up to about 40 degrees already by the noon hour. And then as we transition into the afternoon hours, the clouds will start to build once again and the temperatures though will still be in the 40s. So we're above normal today with increasing clouds, but still dry. That changes tomorrow. More on that coming up with your latest news headlines when Good Morning Indiana continues here at 530. After the Connors on ABC. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Expanding vaccination efforts now at 530. We're breaking down the new vaccine guidance from federal health officials. And Indianapolis Public Schools looking ahead to the new year. Arlissa Donovan has a preview of the seventh annual IPS Showcase of Schools and how it could help you and your family decide the right path for your students. We're on path today to have a great day here on this Wednesday. Welcome to Good Morning Indiana. Raphael, it is great to see you, and it's great to see all of you guys at home. Megan, we know we're halfway through the work week, and it's sounding like today's going to be kind of the better weather day. I'm hoping so. And right. I got my extra cup of coffee with me already, <laughs> so please tell me we got a little bit of sunshine. You know, there will be some sunshine. You know, yesterday we started off with the clouds. We ended with the sunshine, kind of the opposite here today. We'll start off with the sun, and then the clouds will gather a little bit later on in this afternoon. But we're also starting a little bit warmer here this morning uh, than we did yesterday with temperatures that are sitting now. Now, in the 30s, anywhere you go, 32 in Bloomington, 33 in Lafayette. It's 32 as you make your way up into Delaware County and uh, the Muncie area. The skies are partly cloudy this morning, but a southwesterly wind. It's not super strong, but it's the wind direction uh, that's helping to keep our temperatures up a little bit from where they have been the past few mornings. And you notice just a little bit of haze out there. That's just some moisture that's still uh, trapped in the atmosphere. As, cloud, as far as cloud cover goes, clear to the south, a little bit of cloud cover here in northern uh, locations, uh, but still overall partly cloudy skies. And as we expand out, there's not a whole lot off to our west, with the exception of this band of cloud cover that's now moving into northern Illinois. And that's going to drop in our direction. And that's what's eventually going to increase our cloud cover as we work our way into the afternoon hours. But temperatures will be climbing up into the mid 40s. That's going to put us about 10 degrees above normal, Lauren, across uh, the area. We do have some rain heading our way for tomorrow. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Todd. Thanks so 
so much. Let's take a look at your commute this morning. This is up in the Castleton area. Good morning to you. I-69 near 82nd Street. Traffic there is traveling smoothly. Pretty quiet still this morning. We'll keep you updated if there are any issues, crashes, delays that you should avoid. Let's go now to new developments, though, in the effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus here. More people may soon be able to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The federal government is asking states to speed up delivery and expand eligibility. States should immediately start vaccinating people ages 65 and older, as well as younger people with certain health problems. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar says the government will no longer hold back the second dose of the two shots. Azar says the government is now confident that Pfizer and Moderna are making enough of the vaccine, which will allow everyone to get their second dose. Lauren, we're working for you, and we asked Indiana State Department of Health if they are prepared to expand vaccination efforts here. They say in part, quote, the state has received more than 520,000 doses of the vaccine, and nearly all doses have been accounted for with scheduled appointments. We will continue to expand eligibility as quickly as vaccine supplies permit, end quote. Officials say they will continue with scheduled appointments. Those include vaccinating people 80 and older, uh, along with long-term care residents, health care workers, and and first responders. So it appears that there aren't immediate plans for Indiana to expand vaccine distributions to people as young as 65 yet. Eric Holcomb will hold his COVID-19 update later this afternoon. We'll bring you updates about who's next in line to be vaccinated and when, Raphael. Happening today, the Hamilton Southeastern School Board is scheduled to meet and to discuss a possible re return to in-person learning. Here are the details on this Wednesday morning. Currently, all students K through 12th grade are doing virtual instruction. As it stands now, students are expected to return to a form of in-person learning next Tuesday, January the 19th. In a message released just last week, the two superintendents said that while cases are not spiking, the impact of holiday gatherings may still drive up the numbers. The Fisher's Health Department currently lists the community risk at level four, with the seven-day positivity rate at just over 14 percent. And under that rating, virtual instruction is recommended. Lauren? Rafael, let's stay on the topic of students. It's that time of the year again for IPS families to look ahead to the upcoming school year. And so our own Alyssa Donovan is joining us live this morning with the details on their showcase of schools. Alyssa, it's great to see you. What can you tell us? Good morning, Lauren. And one of the great things about IPS as a school district is that they do have all these different educational pathways for students that they can explore different career paths. And today is a way for families to explore that as well. IPS's showcase of schools is typically held in person, but like many things, that's a little different today. Usually people can stop at booths and learn more about different school programs. But this year, the event will be virtual. During the event, families can head to the showcase of schools website and search through all of the schools available for students. They can watch informational videos to learn more. Representatives will also be available from each school to answer any questions parents might have. This is also an opportunity for these schools to showcase what they can offer students. And the virtual IPS showcase starts this morning at 9 a.m. and it goes until 9 p.m. If you haven't registered yet, we have details for that on our website, WRTV.com. Reporting live, I'm Alyssa Donovan, WRTV. Thanks for that report, Alyssa. Developing this morning, the surge of deadly violence in Indianapolis continues into the new year, Raphael. And so Megan Metro Police investigating multiple deadly crimes across the city. Five shootings happening within a span of just four hours yesterday. And at least one person is seriously hurt. Three of those people were shot around 645 Tuesday evening on Pasadena Street, that's near 38th and Shadeland on the city's northeast side. One woman was taken to the hospital. We're told that she's in critical condition. A second woman and a man were pronounced dead at the scene. Here's what we know about the other cases. At around 3 yesterday afternoon, a man was shot on Hillside Avenue near 25th Street on the near near north side. And he was taken to the hospital in extreme critical condition, but later died. Around the same time, a woman was shot and killed on Boulevard Place just north of West 38th Street near Crown Hill Cemetery. And just before 5, police say someone shot a man on to death on Stafford Court at an apartment complex near 42nd and Post Road.
As always, if you have any information that can help police solve any of these cases, you're asked to call the crime line. That Crime Stoppers number is 317-262-TIPS. And you can remain anonymous and may be eligible for a cash reward, Lauren. And Megan, it is 537. Some major changes could be coming to Indiana law enforcement officers. House Bill 1006 passed out a committee on Tuesday in 11 to 0 vote. Under this new proposal, a state law enforcement training board would establish mandatory de-escalation training guidelines for officers. The bill will also penalize officers who turn off their body cameras that are worn and the proposal bans chokeholds and less needed in rare circumstances. The bill sponsor says it's meant to increase public trust and now it moves to the House floor for consideration. Raphael. On, on a much, much lighter note, it is January, so that means it is time, it is time now to get those Girl Scout cookies. But like so many organizations, of course, the group is making a lot of adjustments because of this pandemic. The Girl Scouts of Central Indiana are now working with Grubhub, and that means they can offer contactless delivery of your favorite cookies. The partnership is also being used as a learning opportunity. We're super excited for this innovative partnership and girls are involved in the Grubhub. And so we always look at the skills girls are learning through this entrepreneurship program and Grubhub in, and just organization, organizations like that, you know, have their own back end, they have their own technology systems. So girls are learning that system. And so this is just another layer of ways in which they've expanded their horizon. So we're super excited about it. So buy your cookies, buy many, many cookies. Local Girl Scouts CEO Danielle Shockey says that Grubhub will waive its delivery fee for the program. Grubhub, it starts those sales on January the 22nd, and starting next month, you'll see socially distant or contact-free in-person cookie booths at participating locations. And Todd Clausen, I have your order already. What do you want? Some do si -dos, Samoas, Thin Mints, thin mint Tagalongs, all the above? Um, all of the above. You forgot one, though. Kind of my favorite if you had a... Uh, S'mores? The, the trefoils, I think they're called. The tree, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sorry. Yeah, the lemon ones, and I can you already... Four of those or seven of those? Yeah, and I can already feel my suit coat getting a little bit tighter. <laughs> uh, just thinking about that, Raphael, but uh, always a great, great cause to support. Outside right now, I'll take the extra pounds for the support. Outside right now, it's a little on the cool side. Temperatures are in uh, the 20s and 30s as the kids head off to the bus stop with skies that are partly to mostly cloudy, depending on where you are, but no precipitation. That's the good news. But as the kids come home, we're looking at temperatures that are going to be right around 45 degrees and that is going to put us above normal today though is going to be the warmest day of the week as we progress throughout the remainder of the week temperatures are going to start to fall off not so much tomorrow we're still right around 44 degrees but on friday we're down into the upper 30s and then by the weekend we're looking at temperatures that are going to be right around a freezing with the push of cooler air that's going to be coming in uh, late in the week slick spots will be a possibility as we'll be dealing with some snow showers across parts of the area we're not looking at any hefty accumulation, uh, but certainly enough to slicken up the roadways and spots. We'll talk more about the timing of these snow showers coming up in Maine weather when Good Morning Indiana continues here in just a couple minutes. Thanks. Welcome back. It has been one week since the deadly siege on the U.S. Capitol and calls to remove President Trump from office are growing. That's right, Lauren. But overnight, Vice President Mike Pence said he will not invoke the 25th Amendment. In a letter to House Leader Nancy Pelosi, the vice president said going doing so would not be in the best interest of the country. The letter goes on to say that that amendment should not be used as a means of punishment and instead reserved for cases of medical or mental incapacitation. Pence also wrote Congress should focus on smoothing the transition to President-elect Joe Biden's administration. And Megan, the vice president's letter really came a day before the House is now set to vote on impeaching the president for a second time. Now, Democrats this time around are not alone. Some Republicans, top Republicans, say they will support the impeachment decision. On Tuesday, Liz Cheney of Wyoming said that she will vote to impeach. She is the third highest ranking Republican in the House. In a statement, Ms. Cheney wrote that the president, quote, 
summoned this mob and lit the flame of this attack. She adds there has never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States, of his office, and his oath to the Constitution. Ms. Cheney is among at least three other House GOP members and more than 200 Democratic members seeking to impeach the president. A source confirms to ABC News that Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has also supported the idea of impeachment. Lauren? And Raphael, in his first public appearance since the attack on the Capitol, President Trump denounced impeachment efforts, calling them ridiculous and implying they could revoke a violent response. He was speaking to reporters before heading to visit the border wall out in Texas. That's when the president called the impeachment a witch hunt. He also said that the speech he gave at that rally ahead of the Capitol attack was, quote, totally appropriate. Millions of our citizens watched on Wednesday as a mob stormed the Capitol and trashed the halls of government. As I have consistently said throughout my administration, we believe in respecting America's history and traditions, not tearing them down. We believe in the rule of law, not in violence or rioting. If you read my speech, and many people have done it, and I've seen it both uh, in the papers and in the media, on television, uh, it's been analyzed, and people thought that what I said was totally appropriate. And if you look at what other people have said, politicians at a high level, about the riots during the summer, the horrible riots in Portland and Seattle and various other, other places, that was a real problem, what they said. But they've analyzed my speech and my words and my final paragraph, my final sentence, and everybody to the T thought it was totally appropriate. The president also said he takes no responsibility for those who breached the Capitol, attacked police, and threatened to kill lawmakers, including Vice President Mike Pence and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Raphael? Lauren, many news organizations now reporting that one of the suspects arrested in the Capitol attack had notes referencing overthrowing lawmakers and mentioned Indiana Congressman Andre Carson in particular. I spoke to the congressman last night about this case. I think it really hits home about how dangerous some of these individuals were when they stormed the Capitol. Uh, this individual did not issue a general statement about violence. Instead, it was targeted and specific. He had intent. Uh, he brought sophisticated weapons uh, across country. And this specific threat to me and others from a targeted list with my name on it and with others' names on it um, really, I think it, it, it highlights the times in which we live. Um, I think it's unfortunate that there was a collapse in terms of leadership and preparedness as it related to the response of Capitol Police with the lack of response. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think every American needs to know this. Uh, this is the true nature of the threat that we're facing in our democracy right now. It's targeted, it's specific, it's very sophisticated. And uh, there was some mob-related behavior and violence on January the 6th. But there were also terror threats, uh, threats to our democracy. And this is just one example. Uh, coming up in the next half hour of Good Morning Indiana, more of my conversation with Congressman Carson, including his thoughts on efforts to remove President Trump from office and how we as a country can move together and forward. Megan? Thanks, Raphael. Well, members of Congress now have to walk through metal detectors to get to the floor of the House of Representatives. They were installed on Tuesday. The change comes after growing concerns about certain representatives carrying weapons. Firearms are permitted in congressional offices, but not in the chamber. North Carolina Representative Madison Cawthorn said he violated that rule. He was armed when rioters stormed the Capitol last week. Some members of Congress say they are concerned that others in the House or Senate will help protesters gain access to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration week. Meanwhile, House Democrats are planning to find members who don't wear masks on the House floor. The move comes after at least three representatives tested positive for COVID-19. Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman says she thinks she was exposed while sheltering in place during the riot at the Capitol last week. Representative Pramila Jayapal also tested positive. She says several Republicans refused to wear masks during that incident and mocked colleagues who offered them one. The new fines will be $500 for the first offense and $2,500 for the second offense. That money will be deducted directly from lawmakers' pay.
Well, get ready to show proof of a negative COVID test. If you have plans to fly internationally, a new CDC order expands upon the similar one that's already in place for UK travelers coming into the country. That was in response to the discovery of that new COVID variant found in Britain. This rule applies to foreign visitors and US citizens. The agency says it's waiting until January 26 to make this rule effective. That will give airlines and travelers time to prepare. Of course, we'll keep you updated as we learn more details. Time right now is five. Let's get a look at our forecast with Todd. All right, as you walk out the door and get your day going on uh, this Wednesday, the middle of the week, as we turn our attention towards the weekend, uh, today is probably going to be the warmest day of uh, the week. Yesterday, we made the jump finally back up into the low 40s once we got that sunshine in. Some sunshine once again uh, today, although I do think the clouds will increase as we work our way into uh, the evening hours uh, tomorrow or even the afternoon hours. And then as we work our way into the weekend, I do think there'll be the possibility of some snow showers heading our way. No precipitation outside right now, though. We're dealing with temperatures that are currently sitting generally right around the freezing mark. Couple degrees below here in Indianapolis at 30 degrees uh, with the wind out of the southwest at 13 miles per hour. It makes it feel uh, like it's 20 degrees. The key is not so much the wind speed, but the wind direction uh, with it being out of the southwest. That's keeping our temperatures actually up a little bit. Typically this time of year, if we had calm winds and clear skies, our temperatures would drop down to more seasonable levels in the low to mid 20s. But right now, many of you, as you see here, are sitting in the 30s. The wind does cut those temperatures uh, just a little bit. Feels like it's in the 20s. So you definitely need to bundle up as you get going uh, throughout the day today. But once the sun comes up and we should have a decent amount of sunshine here this morning, our temperatures will moderate fairly quickly. We'll go through the 30s here this morning and then eventually by the noon hour, right around 40 degrees with high temperatures today. Uh, that'll be topping off right around 45 degrees uh, with again increasing clouds across the area. There's a little bit of cloud cover this morning to the north, otherwise partly cloudy skies. The bulk of the cloud cover though still off to our west, but that is heading in our direction. That's why the forecast calls again for increasing clouds as the day goes on. So the brightest part of the day going to be the first half of the day. The clouds are in place this evening. Temperatures though because of the clouds are in place won't fall off a whole lot. We're looking at highs that are temperatures throughout the evening hours that'll be in the mid to upper 30s. Now highs tomorrow are still in the 40s. It's still an above normal day for us temperature wise. Uh, but the clouds will be more firmly in place throughout the day on Thursday out ahead of our next storm system that's going to bring back in the colder air. It's not a huge storm system by any means. Uh, it's an upper level low that's going to be to our north, but we could see some rain showers as early as a Thursday evening. So tomorrow evening after sunset, there'll be the potential for those showers. And then as we work our way throughout uh, the rest of the weekend, Friday and Saturday, with this low to our north, it's just going to pick it some snow showers counterclockwise around that low. I don't think we're looking at anything that's going to put down heavy snow accumulation, uh, but visibilities could be reduced on the roadways with some of those potent snow showers rotating through, and there could be some minor snow accumulation across the area, enough to slicken up the roads, probably not enough uh, to send the kids out sleigh riding, uh, but nonetheless, it does get colder over the weekend with temperatures right around freezing, and then Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies and temperatures in the 30s. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks. Let's take a look right now at your commute. This is down south of the downtown area, I-65 near Raymond Street. Traffic here is moving along up to speed, both northbound and southbound. No issues to slow you down. We'll keep you updated, though, on the other side of the break. Stick around. Hey, responsibly, DraftKings. All right, Raphael, you remember that futuristic cartoon, The Jetsons and the Robot Maid yes. named Rosie? Yes, and their oh, yeah. dog Elroy. I mean, don't make me sing the song, but yes, <laughs> I know it. Now you can get your own Rosie or maybe your own Ross, whatever you want to name your robot. It's up to you, and it's all thanks to Samsung. This is the Samsung Bot Care 5. It is designed to be like a personal assistant with artificial intelligence to recognize and respond to your behavior. So it can help someone like Lauren Casey put up her tree decorations for Christmas in March, whenever it wants. You can learn your, it can learn your schedule, habits and even send you reminders to help keep you on task. The Samsung Bot Hand D6 is even cooler because it can help clean your home and even check this out, not yet but soon, 
pour your wine. Both robots are still in development, but could be released in the near future. We'll see what happens with all that technology. You are in our future as Good Morning Indiana continues on this Wednesday right here on WRTV.